بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و علی طیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف اوکی when the prophet suggests offers to us to purify us, to revive us, what should we do? Of course, we should appreciate and we should benefit from this offer. The very first thing that the people who respond positively to this offer is to control your desires. You cannot from day one have pure soul pure heart, pure mind, pure actions. No. For quite some time, you have to learn how to play with your soul. It is like a horse which is to be tamed. You have to tame your soul. If you put too much pressure, then the horse may run away. If you don't do, put any pressure, the horse takes you wherever he wants. You have to learn how to control your soul. The very first thing that you have to do is that when something is haram, when something is prohibited, when something is morally wrong, definitely say no. And even don't think about it. Please, you know, sometimes we don't do haram, but after spending so much time on that, this is waste of energy and there is chance that maybe sooner or later you give up. When you know something is wrong, right away say no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى The one who fears the position of his Lord, who feels the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prohibits his soul from going after her whims and wishes, would have his place in heaven. You have to prohibit, you have to forbid your soul from doing bad things. Don't listen to it when he wants to do something bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said to Prophet Dawood, Allah nabiyyina wa alihi wa alayhi salam, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna al-nasi bil-haq, wa la tattabi' al-hawa. فَيُظِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ O Dawood, we have appointed you as our vicegerent on the earth. He is vicegerent of Allah on the earth. خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهِ But still he has to be warned. So no one can say, I don't need warning. I am, mashallah, a good moment. I have been in this community for 30, 40 years. No. Even Dawood must be warned. La tattabi'il hawa. Fahkum bayna al-nasi bil-haq wa la tattabi'il hawa. Judge or rule among the people truthfully and do not follow your loss, your whims, your lower desires, your appetites. Because they will mislead you. They will take you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the very first thing that we have to do is to control ourselves, to press the brake if our soul wants to go to the right, uh, to right direction. Imam Ali salam has very beautiful saying about a brother in faith that he had. We don't know exactly who was that brother. Some people say maybe it was Salman, some people say maybe it was the Prophet himself. 
This is the wise saying number 289. Maybe according to some editions would be few numbers more or less. According to my edition, 289. Imam says, Kana li fi In the past, I had a brother in God. So it's not a brother from, you know, blood relation, but a brother in God. Kana yu'zimuhu fi aini saqarud dunya fi aini. What was making him great in my eyes was that dunya was small in his eyes. If you want to understand how valuable someone is, you have to check what are the things which are valuable for him. Okay? For example, you want to know what is my value. So you have to see for how much money I am able to tell a lie. If I tell a lie for $100, so my value is $99.99, the maximum. If you give me $1,000 and then I tell a lie, that is my value, a little bit less than that. Imam Ali salam says, you want to understand the value of Ali? Ali says, if you give me the seven continents and whatever is under a sky and above them, to take the peel of one barley seed from an ant, I don't do it. So, this is the value of Ali. He is not able to do even this little thing, even if you give him the whole world. So, people depending on how much value they have for themselves, they are prepared to do bad actions. So, Imam Ali says, this brother in faith that I had, was very great in my eyes, because dunya was little in his eyes. So he was more important, more valuable than dunya. And then he mentioned several qualities. One of the qualities is this. Kana idha badahahu amran. When he was faced with two options. Sometimes, you know, you wonder what to do. Many times this happened to our life, in our life. We don't know what to do. Shall I do this or this? Shall I, for example, Go for this trip or not? Shall I make this business or not? Shall I meet this person or not? So when there are two options. Kana idha badahahu amran. Yanzuru ayyuhuma aqrabu ila al-hawa. He was only concerned which one is more likely to be because of his whims. His appetite. Okay, you may say we do the same. But the difference is that we find which one is closer to my soul, then I do it. Unfortunately. Which one I love personally, then I do it. But that brother of Imam Ali was opposite. He was seeing which one is dearer to his soul, which is not acting in the way it was supposed to do. A soul which is commanding to do bad things, lower desires, and then doing opposite. Or according to some versions, So he was always checking. This one, there is great chance that it is for my selfish you know, interest. That one, no. I don't have selfish. So I do the other one. This is one method which is very helpful. Whenever you are faced with a dilemma, and you don't know which one is really good, which one is really bad, see which one has greater chance to be the desire of your nafs, of your soul. And then do the opposite. So, the very first step is to control. But, inshallah, if we go on, 
resisting against the temptations of the soul, do you know what happens? The soul gradually transforms. The soul would no longer bring temptations. The soul starts becoming pure. First you have to be very careful. You don't want to do good things. You want to do bad things. If you control it, after some time the soul starts changing. Gradually your own soul starts enjoying doing good things. And this is when we move from nafs ammare to nafs lawwame and then nafs mutmaine. Nafs ammare means the nafs which commands us to do bad things. A little progress you make, it becomes lawwame. It blames you when you do something bad. You keep going on, then becomes tranquil heart, tranquil soul. That is only thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully concentrated on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So human soul has this capacity to change and transform itself into a pure soul. And on the other hand, if we keep listening to the wishes and desires of the soul, we become worse and worse and worse to the extent that Allah says, Ula'ika kal an'am, balhum azal. They are like animals, or even worse. So, although human beings all look the same, but from a spiritual perspective, they are not all the same. The body is the same, but some people have human soul, some people have just animal soul in their heart. Here there is a discussion which is a little bit difficult, philosophical, but I want to mention this because I think it's good. It gives you a kind of discourse that you can use with respect to your youths or even non-Muslims. So if you bear with me just for a few minutes, I mention one philosophical point which I think is very useful. You know, in philosophy, we say that <clears throat> when we classify different beings, then we have, according to Aristotle and many Muslim philosophers, we have ten categories. Nine are substances, uh, sorry, nine are accidents, araz, one is substance. I don't want to go into details, but at the end, what we have in the bottom of these lines of categories are the very beings that we have outside. And these very beings have some common elements and some exclusive elements. For example, when we come down, we reach to animals. Then among animals, we have human beings, we have horses, donkeys, cows, if you look carefully, you find that there are something which are common between them and something which are exclusive. Okay? So those things which are common, they call it genera. Those things which are exclusive, they call it differentia or fasl. So, this is very important. What is making the reality of a being is not its genera, it's its differentia. In other words, what makes a human being a human being? Is it those things that we share with animals or plants or non-living beings? Or those things that we have and they don't have? Okay? What is making a person a human being? If you say a human being is the one who occupy some space. I say, okay, wood also has this quality. If you say human being is the one who grows, I say, okay, even plants do this. 
You say human beings are those things that can move and have sensation. I say even birds have this. So whatever you say, before reaching to the point that is only available in human beings, would not be answer to my question, what is a human being? So now my question is, what is human life? You can use this with your youths or with the people even who are not Muslims. Because sometimes you say, you know, be good, be pious, you know, they say, I don't understand these things. These are Nauzubillah rubbish. Okay, do you want to be a human being or not? I don't think anyone says I don't want to be a human being. This is something that we never negotiate about it. <laughs> Everyone says I want to be a human being. We say, okay, what are those things which are human, really human. There must be things which are exclusive to human beings. Because if you say anything other than those would be found in donkeys, in monkeys, in pigs. The only things which are human are those things which can only be found in human beings. Like what? Like for example, the thirst for truth, this is a human quality. You don't find this in animals. You don't find any animal who has spent his life studying to find out the truth of the world. They only know that amount of truth that they need. They don't want to know more or less. That's enough what they know. There is no cat or dog who says that I want to know more. Whatever they know is enough for them. Curiosity and seeking and search for truth is a human quality. Love, which is unconditional, which is not based on instinct, is a human factor. Animals show love, but that love comes by instinct. A mother cat, a mother dog has love, but this love is very different from human love. The love that they show is forced by their instincts. They cannot resist. And this is why you find all of them, all mother cats act the same way. You don't find a mother cat mistreating her baby or abandoning her baby. But in human beings, it's by will. And therefore, sometimes they show it, sometimes they don't show it. This is exclusive to human being. The love for worship, the love for beauty, the love for order, these are things which are exclusively human beings. So, Everyone who wants to be really a human being must spend his time and energy on growing these qualities. So if you are faced with a person, a young person, a teenager or an adult, who spends his time only on eating, drinking, sexual relation, games, or working so that he earns money to do these things. So this is not a human life. He has not yet become mature, has not yet developed his humanity. A human being is the one who goes above animals and ex press and uh, manifest in itself the qualities which are exclusive human. And if you carefully look at these human qualities, you find that at the end all of them point to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every human quality points at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want beauty, who is the most beautiful? You want love, who is the most loving and the most lovable? You want truth, who is haq? 
whatever you as a human want at best is available when you get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a type of discourse that you can use with the people who may not be very much interested in religious discourse. So we as human beings have to resist against our lower desires, animal desires, and only pay attention to them and try to satisfy them as much as we need for our human perfection. We eat, we drink, but as much as we need for our human perfection. Not that we l make all our life because we want to eat or drink, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Shams, after soaring by many things, at the end says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah has made human soul in the best possible way. This is أَحْسَنَ تَقْوِيم This is the best creation possible. Part of the perfection of this is that the soul itself is sensitive to good and bad. There's a conscience in human being. فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا is inspired to understand what is good, what is bad. Once a person went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And before asking the Prophet, the Prophet said, what is the answer to his question? His question was, what is the meaning of piety, goodness, birr? The Prophet said, good piety is something that you acknowledge by your heart. Anything that you expose to your heart and brings disturbance, worry, this is not good. Anything that gives you calm and tranquility, this is good. You see, the people who are liars, all the time they are worried. Because they are worried that someone may realize that they are telling lies. And this is the way that they can detect by machines who is a liar because when the person is lying the blood pressure everything is affected but the person who is telling the truth has no worry if someone asks you is it good to be helpful kind honest trustworthy helpful punctual, humble, your heart will say, yes. You don't need any teacher. You don't need anyone to tell you these things. You understand by yourself. Alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. Allah has inspired the soul to understand what is good, what is bad. These are all human desires. These good qualities are all human desires. But, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ The one who purifies this soul and safeguards this soul from dirt and impurities becomes prosperous, becomes happy. The one who doesn't do with this soul, ignores, overlooks, then would fail. Allah has given you a beautiful flower, a beautiful picture. It's up to you. Do you want to safeguard it or you want to make it dirty? Human soul in the condition that Allah has created is pure. 
This is fetrah. But if you don't protect it, if you don't safeguard it, it becomes dirty. So the whole point is tazkiyah. Qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. Okay. One of the most dangerous sources of germ and impurity is, you know what? What is one of the most dangerous sources of dirt and impurity? Shirk is the result, is not the source. The most polluted thing. Pardon? Yeah. Hubbu dunya ra'su kulli khati'ah. The excessive love for dunya. The excessive love for material pleasure is the root of all the dirt and mistakes. Because this is taking us back to our animal side. It doesn't let us grow. Hubbu dunya is taking us to the estate of an animal. It doesn't let us grow. There is a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, حب الدنيا رأس كل خطيئة ألا ترى كيف أحب ما أبغضه الله Don't you see how a person who loves dunya loves something that Allah hates? In the sight of Allah, dunya is hated. Of course, you know, dunya doesn't mean nature. Dunya doesn't mean earth as a planet. Dunya is the condition of a person. Dunya is to be obsessed, to be in love with the material life, worldly life. In the sight of Allah, the least significant thing is dunya. And this is why he gives dunya very easily to his enemies. Even Allah says in the Quran that if it was not that some believers may start doubting, I would have given them even more. So much so that they could make their houses from gold. Make their houses, the ceiling and the roof with gold and silver. Because dunya has no value. Allah gives it easily. Even if you have some requests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some hajat. If you want car or job or money, the chance of getting it is much more if you want some spiritual qualities. If you want taqwa, if you want piety, you have to pray harder and harder than if you want a good car, a good house. Depending on the value that these things have. So the Prophet says, the person who has hubbu dunya is making something which is the least valuable thing in the sight of Allah, the most valuable thing in his life. So this is a big mistake, this is a crime. This is the source of dirt. Okay, what should we do? Look at this beautiful Quranic point. The Prophet wants to purify us. He offers a package. This package, which is a package for recovering our health, has several medicine. One important medicine is zakat. To give money. Why? Because this is the only way to get rid of hubbu dunya. Nothing can substitute charity. 
When we say zakat in the Quranic sense, it includes homes, charity, whether it's obligatory or recommended. Any money that you spend for the sake of Allah helps you in purifying yourself. Some people like the author of Lisan al-Arab, they say the reason zakat is called zakat is because it comes from the root zakawa. Zakawa has two meanings. One is purity and one is growth. When you give zakat, when you give charity, your money becomes pure. And also your money grow. But I think there is a better explanation in the Quran, different from what he says. I think zakat is called zakat not because the money becomes pure. Zakat is called zakat because the person who gives zakat becomes pure. Otherwise money by itself doesn't have purity or impurity. The way you gain it, the way you relate to money can be pure or impure. Money by itself is money. It can be in your hand or my hand or hands of someone else. It can be owned, owned by the Prophet. Money by itself has no problem. It's the way I gain it or spend it or relate to it which has problem. Look at the Quran. Quran explains this very beautifully. This is in Surah Tawbah number 103. Allah says to the Prophet, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً So today we are talking about spirituality, but instead of giving you a strange instructions, I tell you give charity. Because this is Islam. We cannot create a spirituality you know, by taking from other traditions. Islam has explanation for everything. Allah says the Prophet has come for purification, you zakki him. Then in Surah Tawbah number 103, it says, Take from their possessions, from their properties, charity, and by this you purify them. So the Prophet asked people to pay zakat, khums, so that they can become pure. This is the beauty of Islam. Everything is planned in the way that helps spirituality. If you say, Molana, I have a bit problem with giving money. Can I pray more or fast more? I'm sorry, no. <coughs> Even day and night you, you pray and fast, without giving money you don't achieve anything. This is not my... Word. This is Allah. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّوا You will never achieve goodness unless you give, and not only give, give what you love. Because the whole point is to get rid of this love for dunya. So you have to give those things that you love so that you can achieve purity. In another place, in Surat A'la, which is chapter 92, verses 18 to 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى The one who gives his money seeking purity. Tazakki means to seek purity. Tazkiya means to give purity. In chapter 35, number 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِهِ And this is why you find in Quran, in tens of places, Salat and Zakat come together. It's impossible to be a good person without giving money. It's impossible. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has summarized Islam in two things. 
You know Surat Bayyana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ خُنَفَاء They are not asked to do anything other than worshipping Allah while they are facing towards the truth. وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُعْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ And to say, establish the prayer and give zakat. وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ And this is the upright religion. The religion which can remain a strong forever is the religion which is based on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in particular doing two things. Establishing prayer and giving alms. So you have to give some money. Some ulama, when they have lessons on akhlaq, first they ask people to give sadaqah. So that they get rid of this dunya. When we reflect on the Quran, we realize that this process of self-purification, which must be, inshallah, later explained how can be performed and handled, is not an easy job. It needs determination. Alhamdulillah, most of the people At least the people that you know we are in touch with, they want you know to be good. We are not facing the people who are really wicked and want to be bad. Most of people want to be good. But they think that just wanting to be good is enough. There is no determination. This is the problem. We have to be determ determined because it's something difficult. It's really challenging. This is jihad. This is a struggle. So if, inshallah, the people who are here, who are much better than me, if you want to become better, you must know that this is a serious issue. This is not something that you listen and enjoy and then forget. You know, one of the problems is that we listen to the lectures and then we forget. The lessons, especially those which are related to spirituality, needs to be listened again and again. We have to make notes and then practice them and evaluate ourselves. Because, you know, you don't need to hear new things. The things that you know you have to implement. If you don't implement them, thousands of times people have to come and, have to come and repeat. We need to be determined to implement what we hear. You have heard this famous story. I am quoting from Imam Qasim alayhi salam, from his father and his father from his grandfather, finally from the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is very famous. The Prophet sent a group of Muslims for a battle. He didn't go with them. This was Sariya, not Qazwa. So he was not with them. And these people were able to win the battle. When they went back to Medina, they were very happy that they were victorious. The Prophet told them, Marhaban biqawmin qadhavul jihad al-asqar wa baqiya alayhimul jihadul Akbar. Welcome, O oh people who have finished, accomplished minor jihad, and still upon you is to accomplish the greater jihad. These people were shocked. We were in the battle, it was likely to be killed. So, what can be greater than this? We were able to offer our life for Islam. But the Prophet says there is something greater than this. What is that? The Prophet said, Jihad on nafs. That is to fight against your own 
bad soul, uneducated soul, the soul which is not purified. And according to some versions of hadith, there is an ending. Afdalul jihad, man jahada nafsahu allati bayna janbay. The most privileged type of jihad, the best type of jihad, is to fight against your own soul which is inside you. To, find, to fight against an external enemy is difficult. Sometimes you may get injured, sometimes you may get killed. But still compared to an enemy which is inside you is much easier. The enemy which is inside you knows all your secrets. Your strong points and weak points. Everything is known to that enemy. And more than that, because that enemy is part of you, you don't want to fight it. Imagine, you know, if you have an enemy, and then your enemy gives the gun to your son to kill you. What will you do? You don't want to kill your son to defend yourself. So enemy is clever, gives the gun to your son to kill you. This soul which is inside us, is so dear to us that we don't want to fight it. Because I think this is me. This is of course wrong, it's not me. But it looks as, it, as if it is me. So I don't want to resist. For example, if I have a problem with someone, if I have a problem with my colleague, with my neighbor, and then I hear a voice coming from inside me that you must not admit that you made mistake. It's very difficult for me to resist against this voice. Why? Because it's coming from inside me. I don't know that this is shaitan. This is my soul which is not purified. I think it is my own conscience. It is my own reason. So, I don't want to disobey. This is the problem. Sometimes, for example, people, you know, wrong each other. Then it's very difficult to go and ask for forgiveness. Your soul tells you that never ask for forgiveness. Because that person then in future would always expect you to ask for forgiveness. This is a sign of weakness. Never admit to your husband or to your wife that you have made mistake. Because then, again and again, this will repeat. Okay, then you have problem. Is this really the voice of my conscience? Or this is the voice of internal enemy who doesn't want me to be in good relation with my husband or wife? But so carefully is indicating and telling me what to do that I don't realize that this is an enemy. So it's very difficult. Very difficult. And this is why a mu'min must be very suspicious, not about people, about himself. You must be very suspicious about yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Man kana yarju liqa Allah fa inna ajal Allah la'atin wa huwa sami'u al-alim Those who have hope for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a beautiful concept in the Quran, Allah, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who have hope for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must know that this is going to happen. Meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely is going to happen. 
for good people and bad people. Elsewhere, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaghi. All human beings, whether they understand or not, they are struggling, struggling till they meet the Lord. But when people meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would not have the same experience. <coughs> For some people, this would be very joyful. You know, when people meet the judge in the court, the person who is innocent is very happy. Because he says, now I have ability to get my right from this criminal. But the person who is criminal is very worried. He wishes to die and not be present there. All people will be one day standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with two different types of experiences. Wujuhun yawma izan nazira ila rabbaha nazira. There are faces which are very happy, very joyful. Imagine you are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, it's not physical standing. It's a matter of understanding. A matter of having no hijab, as Allah Taala says. There is no veil or barrier between you and Allah. These faces are very happy, very bright, shining. They look at the Lord. But... On the other hand, there are faces which are dusted, covered by smoke. Alayha ghabara, tarhaquha qatara. They don't even want to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they feel very embarrassed with all the crimes that they have done to look at Allah. So this is going to happen. What should we do? So Allah says, Man kana yarju liqa Allah, fa inna ajal Allah illa'atin. This is definitely going to happen. Then he says, Wa man jahada, fa inna ma yujahidu linafseh. So, if you want something good for yourself, if you want to be able to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are happy, while you are pleasing and pleased, do jihad. Do a struggle, purify yourself, be an obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is for your own good. Yujahidu nafsihi for his own sake. Allah is not going to gain anything. By listening to Allah, we are not going to benefit him. This is for our own benefit. So this is a real struggle. This is not something easy. Let me read for you this beautiful hadith. You might, I don't know if you have heard this hadith. There was a companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam called Zirar, sorry, Zirar, the son of Zamra. And this person, Zirar ibn Zamra, was once with Muawiyah. Muawiyah asked Zirar to describe Ali for him. He said, please examine me from this. Because he was worried that if he says, you know, good things about Imam Ali, then Muawiyah will get angry. So he said, no, you must do this. There are many beautiful things. Some of it I have written for you. He said, Kana vallahi ma'ana ahadana. By Allah, when Ali was with us, he was like one of us. He was not choosing any special, you know, place for himself, any privilege for himself. He was with us like a normal person. It was not that he had, you know, a special chair or a special, you know, seat, special dress, some bodyguard. He was like one of us. Yudnina idha ataina. When we used to go and visit Ali, he was asking us to come near. 
You know, the tyrants always want people to be far from them. They don't want people to go around them. But Ali was always saying, please come near. Whenever we asked him something, he was giving answer to us. He didn't say, you know, I don't have time, ask later, or ask my secretary. He was always saying, what can I do for you? What do you want to know? But despite the fact that he was very close to us, we were afraid of talking to him. We ourselves you know, didn't dare to talk to him because of the awe and the status that Ali had. Then he says, Ashhadu billah laraaytuhu fi ba'd mawaqifi. By Allah, I give testimony that I saw on occasions that Ali, in the middle of the night, when the night has covered everything, was standing in his mihrab of ibadah. Qabidhan ala lihyate. He was holding his beard. Yatamalmalu. He was shaking as a person who is beaten by a snack. Vayabki buka al hazin. Was crying very hard. Wakana asma'u. And I was listening to Ali. Wahuwa yaqul. And he was saying, Ya dunya, Ya dunya, Abi ta'arraste, O dunya, O dunya, Now do you want to deceive Ali? You have come to deceive Ali? Am ilayya tashawakte, Now do you aspire to come and deceive Ali? Look at Ali, with such a position, he is worried and crying. Because if for one moment you are not careful, dunya would come and occupy your heart. Hayhat, hayhat, ghurri, ghayri. Go away from me, go deceive others. La hana hinuk. It's not your time. Your time to deceive me has not arrived. Qad abattuka, or according to some version, is batattuka. Qad abattuka thalathan. I have divorced you three times. Umruka qasir. Your life is very short. وَخَيْرُكَ غَيْرُ كَبِيرُ Your good is very little. آه آه من قلة الزاد وبعد السفر ووحشة الطريق. Then Ali says, I am very painful because I see I don't have provision. My provision is very little. And the journey in front of me is very long. وَوَحْشَةَ tariq, And also everyone has to go alone. This is a journey that you cannot go as a group. Of course, finally you will join groups on the Day of Judgment. But in dunya, every person must make this journey. You cannot say to your friend, you know, please take my, you know, luggage, you know. I have, you know, extra weight. Everyone must... Take his own or her own burden. La tazaru wa zaratun wizra ukhra. This is the journey that you have to make, and you are responsible, the soul responsible, and no one can help you. Then, at this stage, Muawiyah started crying, and his tears were coming down. Because Mu I think, if I'm not saying the best, Muawiyah was one of the best people who knew Ali. This is my idea. 
I think Muawiyah knew Ali much better than many of the companions of Imam Ali. Muawiyah was very clever and he knew who is Ali and still stood against Ali. So Muawiyah started crying and then with his sleeve wiping the tears and said, Ha kada kana Abu Hassan. Yes, Ali was like this. Then he told Zarar, what is your sorrow for? How is your sorrow for Ali? Zarar said, my sorrow for Ali is like the sorrow of a mother who has only one child. And his child is killed on her lap. This is my sorrow. Then Muawiyah said, but these friends of mine, these companions of mine, if I die, they don't bother. They would have any sorrow like you. And then Muawiyah looked around and told his people, if all of you together put your sorrow together, would be like this young man for Ali? And it is said that Amra'as gave him very good answer. Amra'as told him, as sahaba ala qadar sahib It means that the companions would look like the person that these companions are his companions. If Ali's companions are like this, because Ali was different. Don't expect your companions to be like companions of Ali while you are Muawiyah and he's Ali. This is what Amra'as gave. So, this is a jihad, this is a struggle. A person like Ali, who throughout his life was serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, serving the truth. He was brought up by the Prophet. He is crying and saying, Ah min qillat al So this is not a joke. This is not something, you know, that easily can be achieved. Of course, if you embark on this journey, if you submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's help come. But if you don't do anything, nothing is going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who struggle for our sake, we will certainly show them our path. So, inshallah, we should make this determination to follow the path of purification, to embark on this journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inshallah Allah's help and support and guidance would be for the people who do like this. Thank you very much for your attention.